think of it as a fraud prevention. Like I've said several times throughout this, it's not if, it's when. And so if you do like to go that check route, you just like to be old school and write your checks, it's perfectly fine. But let's talk about getting this put into place to help prevent you know, fraud from happening because it, it can. You're listening to the Isn't That Rich podcast and we're your hosts, Jill Franks and Ashley McVicker. As young females in the banking industry, we love simplifying the confusing yet everyday questions you have about money. Like, how do I get my finances in order? Where is my money really going? How do I invest for my future? How do I make my money work for me? Can I really afford to buy that new home? These are the questions that keep us up at night. And the truth is no one was born knowing how to handle their finances. And chances are walking into a bank to ask for help seems intimidating. Whether you're a single person in your early 20s saving for your first home, or you're an empty nester wondering what to do with that extra spending cash, this this is the podcast podcast for you. Welcome back to another episode of the Isn't That Rich podcast. Today, we are talking about our favorite topic, which is fraud. Is that your favorite topic? Well, I feel like it's super interesting to talk about. Everybody wants to know what's going on with fraud in the area. And it's ever changing. And it's scary. So I feel like the more we talk about it, the more we can find solutions. And today we're talking about a solution that Farmers State Bank has found for fraud. But we have a special guest on and she's been on our podcast before. Mm -hmm. She is a customer service representative typically located in our Harrisburg branch, but you can find her floating all over this month. Um, I think you're in Heron this month, right? Yep. So so without further ado, let's bring on Taylor Shanks. Welcome, Taylor. Thanks, guys. I'm excited to be back. You know, your podcast episode got like multiple Mm -hmm. views. You were at the top for a while. Neck for neck. Yeah. Yeah. Charlie CEO podcast (laughs) against your uh, What It Means to Get Married podcast. They were... The people want to know about me talking about got, marriage. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I was back in like February, right? Yeah. It was really good. So we're glad to have you back on, yes, Taylor. Welcome Thank back, you Taylor. Yeah. So I mentioned a new solution that we found for fraud, and you've dealt a lot with it recently. But mm-hmm. first, I want to c- talk about um, some of the ways we've seen fraud in the area. I know there's some stories that you that have really amounted to some huge losses for mm-hmm. people in the area because of it's check fraud specifically, correct? Yeah. Cool. Do you want to tell us a couple of those stories? Yeah. Yeah. So check fraud um, is something that is becoming a lot more common and um, it's easy for people to do. Anytime you write a check, you're at, you're putting yourself at risk for your information getting out there, your account routing number at the bottom of your check. So your so, specific account number is at the bottom of each check. So if mm-hmm. somebody gets a hold of that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they could do anything with that. So um, that's just with businesses. We kind of like have to talk about that. So we have different options that we can do instead of using checks. But a lot of people are old school and they still want to write checks, which is fine. I just hate that people can't leave things alone and just not, you know, take them and, and do for what they want with. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> one situation we had where a check did go out. This was not at our bank, but we were told this story. Um and they used the account routing number at the bottom of the check and like made a bunch of payments for themselves personally. So you're saying that there was a business out there mm-hmm. and there was a fraudster that took the routing number from a check mm-hmm. and made like their own personal personal payments, payments mm-hmm. to their own account from with that check mm-hmm. number. Yeah. For some reason, I can't remember exactly what happened, but they like I think it was a loss for them and it was a hundred over one hundred thousand dollars. Wow. Yeah. And the bank didn't yeah, cover it, like which I, I said, mean, we have different situations bank, where they so would or would not exactly but. remember what happened. But um, yeah, it was a loss. It ended up being a loss to them. All because of a piece of paper. Yep. So you really don't realize how dangerous it is to have a check just sitting out in the open. I know we've told this story before on this, uh, this podcast, but I know Tom once upon a time took his car to get detailed in Harrisburg mm. and he yeah. had, he keeps a check for just in case of emergency, just like one single check in his car or did that at that time. And they had taken that check and made copies of that check and just kept, kept writing things. But luckily, obviously the tellers at the bank, when it went to get cash, were able to stop it. But checks are a scary thing. Yeah. Have you ever no. lost your checkbook? 
I have not lost a checkbook. I don't think I've lost it, but I've definitely misplaced it because they give you a whole book full of checks and I don't use that many. And then I, I keep peeling out new checkbooks and I, I'm exposing myself. But, yeah, yeah, for sure. I think you kind of touched on something that I've been thinking about personally doing is that even getting rid of my checkbooks altogether and only going to the bank and asking for mm-hmm. a few checks at a time when I need them. Cause I don't write checks that often. I think the only person I really write a check to is our lawn service once a week, but. <clears throat> well, something yeah. else we've seen too is like someone loses their checkbook and they're like, I lost all these checks. I need to put a stop pay on them. Well, we can't put a stop pay on 80 checks that are in a sequence. You know what I mean? Mm. So it's like, you really need to have to close your account out if you lose a checkbook. Ooh. How inconvenient is that? Good to know. I didn't know that either. So that makes sense. What is a stop pay? So a stop pay is like you lose a check. um, It gets lost in the mail, something like that. We take the check number of the person you wrote it to, the dollar amount, and we put a stop pay on it. Someone at our bank mainly has to go in there every single day and check that account to make sure that check did not clear. And if it clears, we send it back. Okay. Does it cost money to stop a check? Yes, it is $25 one-time fee because it's a very timely thing. It stays on your account forever. It never goes away. So we have to check that account every single day. So there's someone behind the scenes Mm -hmm. manually checking it. So it's not just a computer system that can go in there and look. Somebody has to go. So that explains why it would cost money for a service like that. Yeah, somebody at our bank has to do that every single day. Okay. That's their full-time job. Mm -hmm. Part of it. Just check. We wear many hats. It's one of our jobs. Yes. Wow. Wow. So stop pays are a big deal with checks. Yes. Okay. Do you have any more stories you want to talk about recently happening in our area with fraud? I do. Um, Another story is one of my really, really good business owners. I love them so much. But she called me and was like in a sheer panic. And I'm like, what has happened? Right. And she's like, I, I had paid a bill and they, I just noticed that I'm late. And it did, my payment didn't clear. And so I'm like, okay, what's going on? So we she log paid a in. bill with a check? Yeah. Okay. So we lo- And she mailed it. Okay. So we log into online banking and we look and I'm like, holy smokes, this check has cleared for $21,000. She made it out to a business. Okay. And this check had been recreated and was not made out to this business. It was made out to a person, like a personal An individual. Person, an individual. So I'm like, okay, now we've got a problem. So I'm like, it's cut. It's okay. Like, we'll take care of it. We will return this check. Like, just calm the customer down. You got to put them in the okay chair because they are in a panic. Your business is out right. $21,000 and you find out. So yes, I'm like calming her down. Like, it's going to be okay. We'll figure it out. These are the steps we need to take. Did they alter the amount? They altered the amount just a little bit. Like but it, so she was sending things. out a pretty big check. Yes. No, she but truly still... was paying that business like that amount. Okay. <clears throat> but they had to altered it just a little bit. They altered mm. the original check. No, the check had been recreated. So oh. it wasn't even like the original check she sent out. Okay. And her signature wow. was like very close to the actual wow. signature. Wow. Yeah. So that could, anything could have happened to that check. Maybe somebody picked it out of the mail and made a copy and sent it on. And that's why people put stop pays on because if it gets lost in the mail after so long, which our mail is so far behind too, it goes all the way to St. Louis and back. Right. So that's two and a half hours. I mean, yeah, essentially. I mean, it could get lost anywhere. And, um, so that's what happened. Um, so I look at the back at the check and I'm trying to figure out like, where was this check? Where did the, what bank did it clear at? Mm-hmm. And so I'm. She's like, I mean, I want to press charges. I would too. I'm like, I want to prosecute want this person. I want to go find them right now. Yeah. So I look at the back of the check, find the bank, and of course I'm on the phone because I'm like the feds. If you guys don't know, I mean, well, you know, I feel like you have <laughs> you to be. Know. You have to be. You have to do the. A lot of our tellers and our customer service. I feel like you are you have digging in your. I mean, mm-hmm. Troy. That's all he does, right? Yeah. Is yeah. investigate because the customers don't know to probably call the other bank. I mean, I probably wouldn't. Yeah, I would never no, I would like, Taylor, help me. Yeah. yeah. So I'm calling that bank and I'm like, we have got a problem. Like, I don't know if this has been a new account that's opened at your bank or what. Um, and I actually have never heard back from them. So they never filled me in on what happened, but we did get the check returned. The customer got the money back. And so all was good. But I told her, I said, we cannot keep this account open because if there's one, there's multiple, like people don't right. stop at one. Right. Um, especially if they get away with it. Right. And sadly and so, people, that's their job. That's literally their livelihood is to do fraud. Yeah. But do fraud. you know that if these fraudsters took like all the things that they know and what they're good at and actually put it into a real job, 
Yeah. They'd make a killing at that too. But no, they don't. They don't want to do that because it's not fun. No. But um, so I told her there's going to be more than one. And of course there was. Really? There were multiple. She called me and then she's like, there's another one. And of course it was made out to a person. But I feel like when people do this, they um, have fake IDs and they do go inside a bank and open new accounts under like a fake name. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's I a was legit say thing. I was like, if I opened it or cashed it under Ashley McVicker, you'd Obviously. be in cuffs. We'd yeah. find you. Yeah. <laughs> be in cuffs. <laughs> We'd find you. Yo, um, I feel like if I pick up a penny off the ground, they're going to handcuff me. They're going to be robber. Somebody's watching me pick up this hundred dollar bill off the ground and they're waiting to see what I do with it. No, that happened to me and my family like a long time ago. We were in Paducah and my mom was like, there's a hundred dollar bill in here. We picked it up and she was like, I don't feel like this is real. We went inside and it was fake. Oh, I'm punked right now. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of hundred dollar bills. Yeah. That's another thing in our area. So everyone needs to be aware that there are counterfeit bills circulating in Williamson and Saline County. Um, I called one of my business owner friends, another one um, last night and I'm like, Hey, this is what's going on. So just make sure that your employees are checking hundred dollar bills because that's what's going around Mm -hmm. and they're not marking as fraudulent. How weird is that? So that little marker that you spend money on to mark your bill, it comes up black if it's fraudulent and they are not marking black. So So they're coming up as if they were real. Right. Another one of our employees who is like, Top notch feds as well as I am. <laughs> she um, she figured it out and she you have to hold the bill up and it's missing the face inside the bill. So that's what I told him. Like make sure they're looking for that face inside of it. Okay. Um, but he's and like, you can see the comparison because mm-hmm. somebody posted it last night and yes. the real hundred dollar bill was like a crisp mm-hmm. okay. George Washington okay. right, face. Is that? Is that a hundred dollar bill? Yeah. I hate this. <laughs> no. Guys, Thomas it? Jefferson. No. Jeff- is it? <laughs> oh, no. Someone fired me. Uh, I'm just marketing. We need to go back to government class. Oh, my life. Oh, my goodness. It's too funny. Okay. So goes- <laughs> the face is missing. But he said, I'm going to solve this problem. I'm just going to call. <laughs> and my employees are not taking any hundred dollar bills. Okay. And I'm like, hey, that's a good solution. You just don't take any. Yeah. So that might be, you know, just a good thing for businesses to not just take them for a little bit. Especially if you're a smaller business when, like, say if you're a coffee shop and you're t- accepting a $100 bill for a $5 coffee. I mean, yeah. probably you don't need Because to you know that. what the really bad thing is? Like, you bring that deposit to the bank. Yeah. Hey, our Gloria machine, it spits out money fraudulently it runs those serial numbers on the money and if it's fraudulent it will spit that bill out yeah. okay, so we so can sp- know right away yeah so okay. it spits that bill out we look at it or whatever um and then i mean we have to lower that customer's deposit yeah so really there's no recourse after it we can't do anything about you bringing us a fake hundred dollar bill after you've already accepted it right yeah. like we call the cops and and i'm sure that they love to deal with you know fake bills floating around but um yeah, I mean, we report it to them, they come collect it, and then we don't hear anything else after yeah. that. Yeah, we never really hear the follow-up, whatever right. happens, if right. somebody's arrested or, yeah. Anyway, so we've yeah. heard lots of really good stories about, well, not great stories, they're terrible stories, but we've heard ways that fraud is happening in our area. But what is the solution? Because this is the big thing, mm-hmm. um, is finding a solution for, for this, what's happening. So... And you can kind of explain it, Taylor. Yeah. So what yeah. is it called? So it is called Positive Pay. Um, Farmer State Bank does offer it. Um, we have set up a couple of our businesses on this. And one, I just use them as a trial run. Like, let's just run it, see how it works. Um, and it's worked really good for them. So uh, we will start rolling this out to our customers if that's something they're wanting to do. Okay. So it is essentially um, a system ran through our online banking that will prevent check fraud from happening. Okay. So is it specifically just for um, like business customers or is it? Yeah, it's mainly going to be geared toward business customers. Yeah. Yeah. I know because I know checks aren't as common as they used to be. Mm -hmm. They're getting to be less and less. Like I said, I only use a couple myself every month, but they still are a thing and it's a big way that fraud is happening. So preventing the check fraud is super important. And this positive pay can do that. Yes. Okay. So how does it work? It can. So um, we will give them access to the positive pay. They will get on our online banking system. They'll log in as normal. Um, there is going to be a little section where they can upload a file and they can take it and um, like 
I've seen it done on an Excel spreadsheet. You can export that and upload it into our online banking. And the Excel spreadsheet will have the date they wrote the check, the dollar amount, and who they wrote it to. And they'll just upload that as a file. Um, and then the other way you can do it is if you don't have very many checks, you can manually upload them. So you can just key in. Um, okay. Yeah, you can key in the check number, the dollar amount, all of that stuff. But a lot of people, if you have five or six or whatever, 10, I don't know. They like to upload a file. Okay. So this is how I'm thinking that it's working. So a customer enrolls in positive pay and every week they have to track their checks that they write. Mm -hmm. And how they track it is by filling out this spreadsheet with the check number, who they wrote it to and the amount. Mm -hmm. And then they upload it to their online portal. Yep. Is that correct? That's right. Okay. So after you upload your file or you manually put in your checks, you are then telling our system hey, these checks are good. We wrote them. If there is a check that comes through that is not in your list that you said is okay, it's going to flag our teller system. And it's also going to flag your online banking. Okay. So So it's just kind of like a double checking, like a dual security that we talk about. Yes. So whenever you upload them, okay, so you're telling the system it's okay. Say, so I did this on a trial. I ran a check that was um, on our internet test account. So I ran a check that was not in our exception list, like saying Mm -hmm. it was okay. It flagged a teller alert and it's like a big red teller alert. Like you have to um, supervisor override that. Okay. So it takes somebody with supervisor. Yes. You can't just like click through it. So um, we have figured out like if a, a business is using positive pay and one of these checks comes through and and tries to be cashed at our bank or whatever, and that teller alert comes up, we are then going to hold the check. Okay. So we're going to um, contact the person that wrote the check and make sure that they wrote it. Um, And if it's okay, we can let it go through. But if we can't get a hold of the business owner, then we're just going to hold the check because essentially we're thinking it's fraud. Okay. So they're not, that person's not going (laughs) to, not going to leave with anything until we figure out that it's okay yeah okay tell tell me this i want to make sure i'm thinking this correctly jill owns a business jill writes a check to me Mm -hmm. i go cash it at one two three bank Mm -hmm. that alerts you well if jill put that on her list of exceptions that that check she wrote you was okay you won't have any problems you'll be good right but if even if jill spells your name wrong on that check it's going to hit our system and also another thing that happens is like if the you wrote the check but say you spelled her name wrong or something Mm -hmm. it's going to pop up on your online banking and it's going to have you as the the business owner who wrote the check it's going to show you an image of that check and it's going to say do you Mm want to approve or deny this check oh that makes sense so that's also another way that you're going to be checking that when you log into online banking you're going to see all the checks that have cleared if they're not on your exception list you, as the business owner, you have to go in there and approve or deny it. Okay. So it does sound like there's more work on the back end for the customers, uh-huh. but it's probably work that you want to do. Oh, you just heard me tell the story about $21,000. Yeah. Especially if you're writing lots of checks. If you, in their large dollar amounts, like, yes. So Because it, it's more work to, it sounds like to me, to go close the account, out, deal out with all, deal with all these checks in the stress of it and- Yes. Close an account, open a new account, attach everything to it. Yes. Especially oh. if you're a business owner. It's 100% like very good prevention. Yeah. You don't want it to happen, mm-hmm. but it's like, it's one of those things that it's like, it's not if it's when, you know, yeah, because it's, it's just becoming so common with just checks. a numbers game. Just mm-hmm. like, just like getting your credit card stolen or the numbers from your, you know, scammed. Mm-hmm. It's just. A matter of time which is sad but it's the truth it's just the world we're living in right now with checks and like fraudsters they're really getting smarter Mm -hmm. they're probably just stealing these checks out of mailboxes don't you think well like i said the mail goes to st louis and back so i mean there's just floating around mail right you know and you think about um, if you're writing checks to big companies or whatever who's getting the mail there and who's you know going through it and there's lots of different places where it can we trust the mailman <laughs> I believe I so. think so. I think they get That's like, like a, a very bad. government like it is. I went to the post office job. the other day and they were like telling me how they had a very dangerous job. And I said, I work at a bank. I do too. And we got in a fight. <laughs> so we were like in this fight at the, no, I'm just kidding. Oh. So it, it can be a little like timely thing, 
But I think it's also after you do it a couple of times, you probably get used to it and yeah. like get in a groove of it. And some people I think will like at the beginning of the month, write all their checks out and have their Excel sheet for the whole month. Oh, that makes sense to do. You know what I mean? You're paying your bills and stuff like that. Now payroll's a little bit different because you do it once a week or twice a week. Right. But vendors and stuff like that, you... You pretty much know what you're going to owe your vendors pretty early on yeah. in the month. Yeah. So um, say this again, though. If you did leave your payroll out, do you... Will it flag when you send a check out? Yes. Oh, so you that's kind of one of the cons of it is, mm-hmm. like you said, if it's if not you on your list. Mm-hmm, if you don't put it on your exception list, it is going to come up on your oh. online banking where you have to approve or deny that check. So that's kind of a kind of a con. Yeah, I would say that was just maybe a disadvantage of right. doing it is if you have a things lot. that are timely. and. But I have a solution for that. Yeah. I do have a solution for that. Cool. And I'll tell you about it, but. Okay. First, the first thing that comes to mind is with all of this and it being more time consuming is it really makes me as a business owner um, pay more attention Mm -hmm. to what's going on inside my bank account. Like if I have to get Mm -hmm. on my online checking and just check in and upload that stuff, it means that I am more aware of what's going on inside my accounts. Yeah. Um, So I feel like it could be actually a really great thing for these business owners to do, pay attention to where their money's going in and out a little bit more. Yeah. I talked to another... um, secretary at a business the other day like a very bigger business and they're very busy and stuff and I'm like talking about online banking and things like that and ACH and I'm like okay so who's balancing your statement like who's looking at your statement yeah and she's like no one yeah I'm no like, one's reconciling okay yeah. I said we got to come on site like we got to talk to you about how we can help you put dual controls in place like things that we do and oh yeah. my gosh just, nobody balances their statement. Yeah, that's crazy. And they were getting service charges. Yeah. So they were like, why are we getting these? And so I'm like, okay, yeah, you've been getting them for several months. So who's been balancing this? Yes, no one. So I'm like, okay, yeah, we need to set up an appointment to come out on site. Right. Mm-hmm. And help and just, you. And business owners, you know, small business owners, they their, their gig is probably being either maybe they're artsy or, you know, they're entrepreneurs. They, have, they never imagined doing the business side of what their yes, like um, the their gift is right like so they don't plan for the business side so it's all learning curve for them so and that's where I feel like our bank is so different too because mm. we want to come on site we want to help you like we want to give you value and oh my gosh it's just your like reconciling your statements if you need help with that like let's figure out a way to help get that daily task done mm-hmm. like we so want to just make time to help people yeah So I think we talked, you know, that there are a couple of disadvantages to this. Let's talk about the advantages and then go over the disadvantages, maybe some solutions that we can Mm -hmm. give for people that do decide to go on with positive pay. Yep. So the advantages are going to be fraud prevention, of course. Um, We want to try to, like I said, prevent that before it happens because it's just a matter of time. Um, Also, this will avoid closing out that account that I just talked about. And you talked about kind of Ashley, but um, all the automatic withdrawals and yeah, the bills you have set up, like that's going to help take care of that increased control and decreased loss. That's going to help. So like I said, it's going to flag any of those checks that you haven't told our system is okay to let them go through. Mm. So, yeah, I think that's awesome. So, oh, fra- what was that? Sorry. One more thing. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. You can void checks on here. So you put in a check, it gets lost. Um, you know, that vendor reaches out to you or whatever, it's been lost and you can see on your online banking or your statement that it hasn't been cashed yet. You can go into the system and void that check. Oh, oh. Did, is that free then? That is free. Instead, Instead of that, a stop pay that costs you $25? You, girl, Ooh, are that's catching a up. huge advantage. Yes. So you're saving yourself 25 bucks by being able to go and avoid that check. Okay. So I just want to go over that again because so you send a check to a vendor they never receive it. It's not cash. You can go in and say void. Yes. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, if it's you just put the check into your positive pay. Right. If it's on your spreadsheet. Yes. Cool. Now, if it's not on your spreadsheet. I think you can still go in and plug it all in and then upload it and void it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, cool. you could. There's ways to, to get around that. But yeah, how nice is that? You're, you're saving yourself the $25 of the stop pay and you can go in and void that yourself too. Like how nice you don't have to contact the bank and let us know, Hey, I need to put a stop pay on here, but I use positive pay. So let's not charge them the fee. Right. You can just go in there and do it yourself. Tell me this. How many, um, I know we already talked about stop pay, but how many have you seen in on average on, in a business? 
Okay, I have one business, again, really close with them, talk to them daily. Um, and she's got to the point where she she sends me stop pays all the time. She likes to fill the sheet out for me, which I love her for that shout out. But, um, I mean, she probably sends me that one or two sucks. a week. Yeah, that's That's terrible. $25 from your bottom line. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, she's got to get on positive pay. Yeah. For sure. Is she on it? No, not yet. Well, whoever you are. <laughs> <laughs> something to think about sounds like yeah. something you may need so the advantages are fraud control and prevention mm-hmm. um avoiding the hassle of closing the accounts um you increase your own control and then um you can void those checks so those are four really great advantages let's talk about the disadvantages so we already talked about it's time consuming yeah for the business owner It's a little bit tricky too. So like I said, this is something, this is a new product. So the two people I have put on, I'm kind of like, it's trial and error. If you need to call me and talk to me on the phone, we'll do it together. It's not a big deal. I just want to, I'm so like passionate about preventing fraud. And Mm -hmm. so I'm like, if you need to call me every week when you upload this, like we'll do it together. Yeah. We'll figure it out. But like I said, after I think you do it a couple of times and you see how you need to do your spreadsheet and upload it, it just, it's going to be okay. But the first couple of times I do think it might be a little confusing. Okay. Um, what are some other dis- um, advantages? I know we talked maybe about like those missed deadlines to like, if you had your payroll, that could be a disadvantage. Yeah, there is a fee too that's associated oh. with it. So um, we are charging our business customers $30 a month to use it. Um I mean, I say it's a disadvantage just because you're having to pay that. But on the flip side of it, it could prevent a twenty five dollar stop pay. Oh, a twenty five dollar stop pay. Right. Yeah. A twenty thousand dollar check clearing that you did not write. So that you may not get back. Yeah, you may or may not get it back. There is a uh, so it's a small fee compared to the bigger picture of what could essentially happen. Right. Um. So. Yeah. I also think. Um, we should talk about the cost a little bit more because is it the same everywhere? So if you don't bank with Farmers State Bank, can you expect this product or is it the same everywhere? Yeah, bigger banks, I don't know, they could charge 50 bucks a month. Right, right. So, so other banks have the... They are charging for it. Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. It is a, it's a charged product, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I do want to quickly touch on something that's free mm-hmm. and it can also be a fraud prevention instead of going the check route with your businesses we have the ACH capabilities. And ACH is? Um, setting up like automatic deposits into your account. Okay. So a lot of my people, I will talk to them to this about payroll, paying your vendors by ACH with just using their account routing number. Um, it's free to do this. Oh, that's a good idea. But some people like with the positive pay, some people just like to use checks. Mm-hmm. They're just, that's their way of doing things. So that's when the positive pay comes in. But um, ACHing is a nicer way, like a cleaner way too. You're not having to send something out in the mail. So it's just going to my bank account to your bank account. Yeah, it's a, no it's a direct involved. deposit. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, so I, I've been talking to some people about doing that and paying their vendors that way, especially if they're, they're not local. Now, if somebody's local and you want to write them a check, I'm like, please just go there and drop that payment off. Mm-hmm. Don't mail it. Yeah. So that makes sense too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this has been enlightening. I love that there's actually a solution for preventing f- check fraud. Which is funny because th- we've had checks forever. Right. But it seems like we just moved forward with technology, with mm-hmm. the digital age and all that, that people kind of forgot about checks. Yeah. Or, yeah, like how to prevent yeah. them, prevent check fraud. Right. Now we have so this. Here's another product. story. There was a business owner and they had check fraud. This has been probably a year ago or so. And we were notified about the check fraud. So we had closed the account out. We did everything that we were supposed to do on our end. We had these people come through our drive through Mm. to cash a check on this closed account. Well, hello alert comes up, closed account. So, of course, everybody inside's like, what's going dun, on? Dun, dun. Mm-hmm. What's going on? There's two people in the car. Everybody puts on their, like, superhuman, or, like, their badge mm-hmm. that they're a police officer. They're like, at this Let's time, do we're, this. we're doing this. We're like, send yeah. in your IDs right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Call the cops. <laughs> so, listen, they send in their IDs, 
you know, the whole thing. They're from like Indiana, not from here. Okay. And um, Teller Alert comes up. And so immediately, thank goodness, our tellers are just amazing at what they do. And they just go into like survival mode. And they're like, really sorry, our internet connection's down. Our teller system's not working. Do you care to hang out in the drive through for just a minute? And in the back, they're like rushing around like, this account's closed. Who do we need to call? Call the cops right now because they're trying to cash checks. Mm-hmm. So um, the police end up coming, block off the drive through I mean, there's like three cop cars. It's on a Friday afternoon. It's looking like something yeah. good's going down at Farmer State Bank. And um, so they block the car in so they cannot get forward or backward. And they get them out of the car because they're here to cash fraudulent checks. And come to find out, they had check printers in the back of their car. Wow. Lord, so Lord. there's like a, a check ring, you know, of people that sometimes they'll, they'll just be affiliated with the people that are yeah. making the checks and stuff, and they'll just send them out to do the dirty work. No, these people were the main culprits. Ooh. They had busted. the check printers. Yes. Did they go to federal prison? Well, they we really know? sat in the Saline County Jail for like a long time. And, and they're probably going to prison because they were more like... When they got down to the bottom of it, there was a book filled with people's social security numbers and names inside their vehicle. They had done a mortgage under a fake name. There was so much more to the story than just. I'm afraid to do it under my real name. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) I know. So there was so much more to this story. Yeah, it's crazy. And that business owner was so satisfied when we called him and was like, we got them. You're yeah. like, look at the side of the scene. Cops are here. <laughs> yes. They're probably so grateful. Yes. But they had two check printers in their car that and they had wild. like one or two other business checks in that car. So they were, they were frauding them too. Mm. It just makes me feel good that we were able to put a stop to it. Oh, it was a great sight yeah. to see. It was like the most satisfying day. So kudos to our. Mm-hmm. tellers out there who yeah. are quick to act yeah they're superheroes up front they really mm-hmm. are for sure well, thank you so much for being on our episode taylor if yeah. you could leave our listeners with one piece of advice from this episode about positive pay what would it be mm-hmm. think of it as a fraud prevention like i've said several times throughout this it's not if it's when and so if you do like to go that check route you just like to be old school and write your checks it's perfectly fine but let's talk about getting this put into place to help prevent you know, fraud from happening because it, it can just told you a few stories that you don't do not want to happen to your no. business. No. And it's totally preventable. So let's talk about it. If you guys, if anybody's interested, um, please reach out to me. You can call the bank, email me. I'll send you instructions. Come on site. We can help you like walk through this together. Just we're so like willing to work with people. We'll just help you however we need to. So Okay. And we'll link your um, email in the show notes. Okay, perfect. So people can get in touch with you that way too. Okay. And if people do want to sign up for, they just have to reach out. Yes. Okay. Yep. Well, okay. Great. Okay. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for being on Taylor. I hope so to fun. have you on again soon because yeah. it's fun talking it's about fun. it. We'll see how many views this episode can get. Oh my gosh. Let's yeah. beat Charlie Holland. <laughs> yes. <laughs> awesome. Thanks again. We'll see you next week. See you next week, everyone. So Jill, where do we go from here? Be sure to check out our show notes for this episode and also be sure to follow us on social media and subscribe to our newsletter. We'll see you next week. See you next week.